The Apple TV is one of the most capable streaming boxes you can buy. In fact, I'm willing to bet it can do things you didn't even know it could do. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and while Apple makes it very easy to just pull the Apple TV out of its box and get to streaming movies and TV shows right away, it is capable of so much more. And not just for Apple users, though let's be frank, there are several features available only to those who own other Apple devices. But I mean, I know so many people who bought their Apple TVs and got so used to how they work right out of the box that they kind of forgot they could customize the look and the feel of the Apple TV or add individual profiles or even use it for watch parties. So today, I'm not only gonna run you through a list of cool stuff you can do with your Apple TV, I'm going to show you how to do it step by step so you can get the most out of that powerful little black box. Trust me when I say that just a little bit of time invested in learning about this stuff pays off big as you use your Apple TV day after day. By the time we're done, you'll be an Apple TV power user and probably able to show your friends a thing or two as well. Now, if you're new to this channel, well, then welcome. Glad to see you here. And please say hi down in the comment section. I'd love to actually meet you. Also, if you know of any Apple TV tips or tricks I don't cover in this video, tell us all about them in the comments. This is a great place to help each other out. And hey, if you like the video and wanna see more, there are buttons for that too. I appreciate your support. Now let's go. So I want to start with some stuff that will have the maximum amount of benefit for the maximum amount of users. These are simple tweaks that can make the Apple TV experience even better than it already is. So let's start with customizing the look of the Apple TV. So first off, if you're a fan of dark modes, the Apple TV can do that. Click the settings icon, then click general, then appearance, then you can select light, dark, or automatic. Selecting dark will keep the Apple TV in dark mode all the time, while selecting auto will shift from light during the day to dark during the night, just like the iPhone. Now let's play around with customizing how your home screen looks. I like to arrange my apps in the order of most used up top. Also, you might wanna delete some apps or tuck some apps into folders. To move apps, simply highlight the app you wanna move, press and hold the select button until the app starts to jiggle, and then use directional buttons or the swipe pad to move the app where you like, then click select again to put it in its place. Now, this is pretty important. Be selective about which apps you put in the very top row because the Apple TV uses the top row of apps when it starts suggesting content you might wanna watch. But not all apps work equally. So that's why I tend to put Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu up at the very top. Paramount Plus also seems to work well too. Now, deleting apps or creating folders starts the same way. Highlight the app, press and hold until it jiggles, and then you wanna press the play pause button. This will give you more options. And at that point, you can delete an app or if you wanna start a folder or move an app to a folder, you can do that here as well. Next up for the home screen, if you want, you can add the up next feature that you see in the Apple TV app to the very top of the home screen without having to go all the way into the Apple TV app to see it. This way, you get back to something you've been watching even faster. To do this, first make sure the Apple TV app has a spot in the top row of apps using the process I showed you just a second ago. Then go to settings, click apps, then TV, and now click top shelf so it says up next. Now, when I go back to the home screen and highlight the TV app, boom, there's up next. You can also influence what goes into the up next section. It doesn't have to be stuff you've already started watching. It could be something that you wanna watch really soon. So to do this, just long press the select button on the show or movie that you plan to watch and click add to up next. Okay, now let's talk about getting around the Apple TV more easily. We'll start with stuff you can do to make using the remote easier. First, you've probably noticed that getting back to the home screen can be kind of a hassle if you're several clicks deep into the system. There are two ways to get back to the home screen faster. One is to simply press and hold the menu button that zips you straight to the home screen. The other way is to change the TV button on the remote so that instead of taking you to the up next section of Apple TV, it takes you straight to the home screen. Do this by clicking settings, click remotes and devices, select TV button, and then click home screen. And obviously you can undo this later if you want. Now let's adjust how the Siri remote actually works. You may notice that the touchpad is a little touchy, or maybe for you, it isn't sensitive enough. You can adjust this by clicking settings, remotes and devices, 
then touch surface tracking and you can find the sweet spot from there. On the other hand, if you find you don't really like using the touchpad at all and would rather disable it entirely, do that by clicking settings, then remotes and devices, then click pad and select click only. And now the touchpad is just turned off. Last thing on using the remote. If you wanna switch between apps quickly, just double tap the home button. You get a row of the most recent stuff that you watched and you can just swipe and select the next thing over. So that's manual control covered. Now let's talk about voice control. And I think we're all used to using digital assistants for help finding things or executing basics like show me movies with Charlize Theron or what's the weather like today or open Netflix. But you can use Siri for more specific jobs and often it's easier than clicking around on the remote. For instance, let's say you want to back up or advance in a movie or TV show. Just ask Siri to go back 15 seconds or skip ahead 20 minutes. This can come in really handy when the scrubbing interface of an app is bad like it is on Disney+. Plus. You can also save several clicks by asking Siri to pull up specific shows in apps or specific channels in live TV apps. For example, you can say open Stranger Things season three in Netflix or open ESPN on Fubo. Now, Siri doesn't cover every single app, but more often than not, you're gonna get right to where you wanna be faster by using voice than clicking around. Next, let's talk about connecting Bluetooth devices. You can connect headphones, keyboards, and game controllers all via Bluetooth. Obviously with Apple's AirPods and Beats products, the process is streamlined, but you can connect any set of Bluetooth headphones and they'll work for private listening. And you might wanna connect a PlayStation or Xbox controller for playing uh, games or basic navigation, and keyboards can come in handy for typing in text if you wanna save some time. Your pathway for all of this stuff is settings, then remotes and devices, then Bluetooth. And you can see that there's a section here for game controllers, but for headphones and keyboards, it'll just look for a device in pairing mode, and then you can select it from here. Now, if there's a four digit code, Go ahead and enter it if you know of one. And if there isn't one, 0000, zero, zero, zero almost always works. Now I wanna talk about a few settings and security options on the Apple TV. I think one of the most important ones is to set a security code for AirPlay. AirPlay is what lets you stream video or music to the Apple TV from another iOS device. And it can be done by anyone within range of your Apple TV, unless you lock it down behind a code. So to do this, go to settings, then security, then AirPlay, then turn on device verification. Once a device is granted access, a code won't be required again. So if you grant your friend or roommate access once, they'll continue to have it unless you remove their device from the approved list. Okay, so for you Apple users out there, I'm about to get into some stuff that you can only do with an iPhone, iPad, Mac, or Apple Watch. But before I do, I wanna talk about some audio and video setting stuff real quick. So I had to make a decision here. Either do a deep dive on the Apple TV's video and audio capabilities and all the settings related to them, thus making this a much longer video, or save that for a dedicated video. And I've chosen the latter, so stay tuned for that video coming soon. For now though, I did wanna to touch on just a couple things worth looking at. By default, your Apple TV 4K is gonna communicate with your TV and determine what the best video settings will be, or at least it should. It may ask you if you wanna turn on HDR, and you can go ahead and say yes if you have an HDR TV. If you do that though, your Apple TV will always be in some kind of HDR mode, be it Dolby Vision, HDR 10 Plus, or HDR, depending on your TV's capabilities. This means that if you watch content that wasn't made in HDR, you'll be getting kind of fake HDR, and you may not want that, especially with really dark content. <clears throat> Game of Thrones. Anyway, there are two options I encourage you to explore. Click Settings, Video and Audio, and then click Match Content. Here, you can select Match Dynamic Range, which means that the Apple TV will go to SDR mode when you're watching content made in SDR, and then help your TV kick into HDR mode when you watch HDR content. The same idea with Match Frame Rate. Rather than show all content at the same frame rate, you can have the Apple TV deliver the content as it was made. And this is especially important if you like watching movies in 24 FPS, as they were actually made. Otherwise, they can look a little artificially smoothed out. 
On the audio side of things, there really isn't much you need to mess around with. Almost everything should be automated. Go ahead and thumb through this though. Like you can turn on reduce loud sounds for instance, and that'll apply dynamic range compression, which is great when you're just using TV speakers and you don't want really loud stuff to suddenly blow you out of the room. But this will also really put a limit on your soundbar or home theater system if you're using one. Okay, Apple fans, this next section is for you. This is all stuff you can do if you're invested in the Apple ecosystem beyond just the Apple TV. Let's start with AirPlay, which is Apple's protocol for sharing audio and video. Whether you use Apple Music, Spotify, or another music service, you can click the AirPlay button on your Apple device and select the Apple TV to play music through the Apple TV or by extension, a soundbar or AV receiver. Same goes for video. If I'm watching a YouTube video, for example, I can move it from watching on my phone to watching on the Apple TV. The Apple TV will also let you screen mirror though, which is great for Zoom calls. On iOS devices, you have to swipe to open control center, then select screen mirroring, then select your Apple TV. On a Mac, you click Control Center from the menu bar, then click Screen Mirroring, and then click the Apple TV. But AirPlay can also be used for picture-in-picture, -picture, which I think is a super slick tip. Now, you can already engage picture-in-picture -picture on the Apple TV itself, but the list of apps that support it is kind of small. I mean, to get to it, you have to swipe or click up to find this icon, then you click it, and then it moves what you're watching to the small picture in picture. The way I like to use picture in picture is with AirPlay. This way you can send something from your phone or iPad, say this live TV feed from Sling, click the AirPlay icon, and then send it to the Apple TV. Then you can move that to the small picture window so you can go about finding something else you wanna watch. This is a great way to keep an eye on a game while watching something else entirely. Next up for iPhone owners is a way to optimize everything you watch on your Apple TV. This is kind of a picture calibration process that bypasses your TV's picture settings, or I should say kind of works along with them. So you might not wanna do this if you've spent time getting your picture settings the way you want them. But if you wanna optimize your Apple TV, just click settings, then video and audio, and scroll all the way down to calibration, then select color balance. Then take an iPhone with uh, Face ID and iOS 14.5 or later, and just bring it near the Apple TV box. The TV will walk you through the process from there. Super simple. Next up is a feature I don't think people use enough, but it's great for watch parties. Apple calls it SharePlay, and it requires that the people that you're watching with also have an iPhone or iPad. What you do is start a FaceTime call. Add as many people as you want to the FaceTime call. And once you have them on the call, go to your Apple TV, make sure that your user is selected. You can do that by pressing and holding the TV button on the remote. Then go to play a movie or TV show and the Apple TV will ask you if you wanna use SharePlay. You say yes and then you'll be asked to confirm that you wanna do that on your iPhone or iPad. Once you agree, you and your friends can watch the movie together in sync through FaceTime and on the TV. Now, since we're talking about iPhone and iPad, don't forget that they, along with your watch, can be used as an Apple TV remote. This is especially helpful when you need to type something in. On your watch, you can choose the remote app. That's pretty simple. On your iPhone or iPad, go to Control Center by swiping down from the right-hand corner and then click the icon that looks like an Apple TV remote. Anytime you need to enter text, a keyboard will just pop up right on your phone. But this is also great for just controlling your TV if you don't wanna go find your Siri remote. Finally, and I may have saved my favorite for last, I wanna highlight using spatial audio with head tracking. This is, in my opinion, the best at-home surround experience that doesn't involve a massively elaborate home entertainment system. To really take advantage, you'll need AirPods Pro, AirPods Pro 2, newer Beats headphones, or my favorite for this, the AirPods Max. Now, you can do this one of two ways. Either click Settings, then Remotes and Devices, then Bluetooth, then click on the headphones that you're using at that moment, or while you're playing content, movies, TV shows, or music, press and hold the Home button and select the headphones from there. Then you can choose Spatial Audio or Spatialized Stereo for two-channel content. But to get the best experience, I suggest using head tracking. This changes the sound stage depending on where you turn your head. So if you turn your head to the left as you're facing the TV, the audio will seem to come from the TV. But if you don't want this, you can also turn it off. Either way, to access it, click Settings, then Accessibility, then AirPods, 
Then turn center audio on TV either on or off depending on whether you want to use it. Whew, that was a lot. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Let me know which of your favorite Apple TV tips or tricks I may have missed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.